All righty, wow, like we got everybody down here. That's, that's great, so we're, we're like right on time. So our, uh, our first speaker um, is Pedro Martinez. Um, Pedro is currently working at a scientific soft, as a scientific software developer at the University of Calgary. As part of the research uh, data and workflows team, he assists researchers with their scientific workflows and HPC needs. In his free time, he enjoys canoeing, photography, and spending as much as time possible with his family. He can hear you, so please give him a, a warm welcome. His talk is recorded, but there will be time at the end for questions, and in theory, this will all work. So. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank the organizers of Distribute 2024. It is a pleasure for us to present at this event. My name is Pedro Martinez, and I am part of the Research Computing Services Group, RCS, at the University of Calgary. I would like to take a couple of seconds to pay tribute to Dr. Abdel Yusuf. Abdel was the director of RCS, and his sudden passing early this year is deeply felt in our team. Without his support and encouragement, this work would have never been possible. This is an outlook of this presentation. I would like to start by highlighting the motivation behind this work. Next. I will go over the key concepts of abstract and concrete workflow graphs, which are the two main inputs to our application. Then, I will provide an overview of the application and its components to build abstract and concrete graphs, compare these, and schedule jobs. Finally, I will talk about some future tasks and development ideas our group has regarding provenance-centric job scheduling to extend the present work. Workflow management systems track the dependencies between tasks or processes. In this sense, we can say that workflow management systems are a task or processes management tool, whereas Data Lab is mostly regarded as a data management tool. Our goal with this work was to push the limit of what is possible with Data Lab to track not only individual pieces of data or processes, but full complex scientific pipelines by moving the concept of provenance to the center of a scheduling system. In this presentation, we would mostly reference these two terms, abstract and concrete graphs. They are the two main concepts that form the basis of this work. An abstract graph, as its name indicates, is an abstract representation of a workflow. Therefore, the nodes have little information associated with them. In our approach, a concrete graph is derived from provenance, and every node will have information about paths, commands, dependencies, and other items used to produce a specific data, file, or data set. Data Lab is the key component that we use to materialize these concrete workflow graphs. So, how does this happen? On the left, we have an abstract graph composed of three files and two tasks. For execution, the file handles are replaced by file paths, and task receives command information to perform the transformations of these files. On the right, we can see two concrete graphs after they have been realized. But in general, we could have multiple concrete instances of an abstract graph. Each concrete graph, either partial or complete, will be produced by a pipeline run. So these two terms are often used interchangeably. This is a high-level diagram of our provenance-based application lifecycle. On the left side, we have the iterative steps. From the top, in a clockwise direction, we have the concrete graph building stage, the graph comparison stage, and the job scheduling stage. The abstract graph building component shown on the right could be made into an auxiliary or standalone application. However, in this case, it is included in the main package. So how does this work? In this iterative approach, the abstract and concrete graphs are compared and from the difference graph, we extract the tasks to be scheduled for execution. Once these tasks are completed, new provenance can be derived using data lad, which we can then transform into a new concrete graph and repeat the entire process. We can interact with the application in a couple of manners. There is a graphical interface that would probably be welcomed by users who dislike the command line. But there is also a command line interface for scheduling jobs that takes the concrete and abstract graphs as inputs. It also takes a run, which is the name of an orphan branch, as an additional input. The abstract graph building panel is shown here. This tool was built using Streamlit. The abstract and concrete graphs are built using NetworkX. 
Every stage or level in, the, in this graph corresponds to a task or file that can be created using the interface or imported from an abstract graph file. The connections between the different nodes in the graph are made by defining the relationships between nodes and their preceding and succeeding nodes. Well, but how about concrete graphs? How are these derived from the provenance? In this slide, we show that under a data lab data set, we have two orphan branches with different set of files on each branch. From the separate git logs, we can build separate concrete graphs that we need to compare against the abstract graph. Orphan branches are ideal for this when the history does not be shared with the main or other branches. Having said this, another member of our team, Dr. David Divwell, has made some calculations that show that when a number of runs, or concrete graphs, grows considerably, it is more convenient to use separate subdatasets than orphan branches in a dataset. In this slide, we focus on the provenance extraction step. What we do is extract the provenance stored in a dataset or subdataset in order to build a concrete graph. In this example, we show how a commit has all the necessary information to create several nodes. From the inputs and outputs, we create file nodes, and from the command, we build a task node. There's also another approach where task nodes are created and file information is encoded as attributes in these nodes instead of producing separate nodes. We have almost everything we need an abstract graph and some concrete graph extracted from provenance. But we need to establish a correspondence between these two. So we have included a file in the root directory of every branch. This is a translation file that will allow us to map the abstract to the concrete graph. I'm sure that other approaches such as databases are also possible, but we aim to keep it as simple as possible. By making a graph comparison, we can compute the difference between the two graphs and extract a list of the next nodes to be scheduled in the pipeline by the workflow management system. From this difference, and using the in-degree property of the graph nodes, we can see which nodes or tasks remain unexecuted or require re-execution due to errors or changes in input data, and automatically schedule these tasks. In this example, Task 1 has been completed, and Task 2 is the next task to be scheduled. For job scheduling, we extend the architecture described by the fairly big paper. From the difference graph for each pipeline run, we obtain the next tasks to run, which are then in turn passed to the scheduler. We make use of the APS scheduler package to schedule the jobs. However, any other scheduler could be used as well. A scheduled jobs creates one or more ephemeral workspaces for computations. Once all computations are finished and provenance is updated, we can then trigger the building of another concrete graph, which in turn can be compared with the original abstract graph to repeat the, the process. Here we can see that all tasks depicted by the abstract graph have been completed. A concrete graph is completed and for ease of comparison, it has been overlaid on top of the abstract graph nodes. By selecting different branches, we can see the progress of every run on the representation of the abstract graph. Here are a couple of ideas that we would like to explore more in the future. In the current framework, we can execute any type of commands. However, if we were to execute individual methods in a script, we would have to repackage the method as its own command and records its provenance. Ideally, we would like to develop something that is simple and something that perhaps can be invoked using a decorator on a method. Another topic for improvement is the fact that DataLab only records provenance for tasks that output files. If a task outputs nothing, it doesn't get recorded. So we need to implement some type of workaround to achieve this. As I mentioned previously, we originally used orphan branches for different runs of the workflow. We ran some calculations and decided that using subdatasets was better from a scalability point of view. So we are working on a version that implements this change, and we will reserve orphan branches for different versions of a workflow. 
We would also like to implement some scheduling options that are able to interface with HPC systems such as LEARN. Last but not least, I would like to extend my thanks to the Research Computing Services Group at the University of Calgary, and especially to my team, led by Dr. Ian Purcell. I have included our contact information in case you want to reach out after this event. Once again, I would like to thank the organizers of Distribute 2024, and I will be available to answer questions after this session. I'm feeling very optimistic about this. So, uh, Pedro, can you hear us? Yes? Ooh, maybe not. Okay, well, um, no, but he's listening through the live feed. So, um, I can, can you hear me now? We can try this. Nope, okay. So, we're gonna save questions for Pedro for, for when we have the panel later. <laughs> so, and that'll give me. There was? Oh, um, oh, okay. Um, then, uh, yeah, are there any questions out there? Yeah, okay. Um, I think we're gonna, like, it's really, really laggy. Do you wanna give this a try, or? Okay, uh, let's give me like 30 minutes. I have time between now and the panel to like try to figure this out. So uh, let's have the next person come up. Um, and... Yeah, well. 